So the time has come to finally benchmark test my old reliable AMD 7850. Now it's got the built-in integrated R7 Radeon graphics and it's supposed to be on par with the R7 200 series. Now this should prove to be an interesting test because a number of you in the last benchmarking video pointed out that CSGO is a CPU heavy game. Specifically the Source Engine is CPU heavy. Now I found that to be very true in games like TF2, but is it true with CSGO? Now before we dive into the benchmark, I'd like to point out that this benchmark is different. Instead of focusing on the low, medium, high graphic settings, I'm just going to leave everything on high and instead I'm going to overclock the CPU and the GPU. So hopefully this should answer any question there is on whether or not it's the CPU doing all the work or the GPU doing all the work, at least for an AMD APU in this case. Alright, to the benchmark. So it's worth noting here that I'm using the default Mesa drivers that come along with Ubuntu 16.4. So these are not the proprietary drivers from AMD. They are the open source drivers that come with Ubuntu. And as you can see here, the results really aren't that good at all. The stock performance right out of the box without any overclocking was 23 frames per second. That's really bad. And then at absolutely best with both the CPU and GPU overclocked, it got up to 30 frames a second. I think it was actually 29 and a half, but I rounded up. The problem seemed to be with the smoke. For some reason, when the camera goes through the smoke, the frame rate drops to like five frames a second. It's unbelievable. So for some reason, the AMD driver has some serious problems with the way CSGO renders smoke. I'm not really sure what's going on there. But the frame rates everywhere else was pretty stable. Obviously not as good as the Nvidia driver, but I mean, playable. So it's also worth noting that CSGO responded far better to GPU overclocking over CPU overclocking. I mean, I overclocked the GPU from 3.7 gigahertz all the way up to 4.4 gigahertz, and we only gained two frames per second. Whereas when we overclocked the GPU, we gained five frames a second. And then of course, when we combined the two, they just added on top of each other and we ended up with a total of 30 frames a second, which really isn't that great. But that'll wrap up this benchmark.